if you have a system in your vehicle, say if you have um, multiple subwoofers, is for anybody who's going to have multiple subwoofers, of course, in this scenario, if you're going to have, say, a multiple sealed or a multiple vented subwoofer set up in your in your trunk of your car, okay, and it's uh, it's going to have to be a pretty intense system because you know for this problem to arise, it would have to just be pretty amazingly loud, okay. Now, what happens is in a lot of scenarios and a lot of times, old people just overlook it because they get so excited about going out and getting this amazing dream equipment, getting it all hooked up and and just feeling all manly about themselves because it's so amazingly loud and it's just breaking stuff. Um, but, you know, when they cut the volume down or when their unit is off, it's making a fluttering sound or it's making a thumping sound. Uh, or in some cases, it might even make a semi-hollow sound. And I can explain to you why, because nobody's doing it correctly. Okay, everybody wants to have this amazing, awesome, powerful subwoofer but nobody wants to take the time to tune it up and make sure that it's functioning properly. Not just so that way it's done right, but it protects your equipment. Because if you have a, a problem where you have, say for instance, two woofers in a vented enclosure right next to each other and they have a shared port where all the air comes out of. Okay. Now, if you have two amplifiers, because in, in most cases, in a hardcore system or a competition system even, you're going to have two gigantic monster amplifiers, so which obviously this is not any, anything like that, okay? But make pretend that this here is a Memphis Mojo, and right next to it is another brand new Memphis Mojo. Each one's throwing out 2,500 watts RMS, which is crazy to even think of, but it happens, and it happens every day, okay? So now you got, say again, you get two, two of these Mojo amplifiers, and then you have these two Mojo woofers, okay? So that would be some demonstration table because I wouldn't even have a table large enough in my warehouse to even show you all that. But this is going to be good enough and so is this. So that's what it's going to be. All right. So we'll go with the first problem. Let's just say that you have your, your system cut all the way down. You're getting this fluttering sound. It sounds like flip, 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 something like that. Most likely it's because you made the mistake that everybody makes. You go to your amplifier, you find the gain control, you crank it all the way to the right, and you figure you're done. Eh. Wrong. The right thing to do is to get out yourself a multimeter, take the time, get yourself a test disc. If you don't have one, you can download it anywhere. They're free. All you need is a test tone. So let's just say if your system is tuned at uh, 70 hertz, okay, on your vented box, you're going to want to find something that's going to work the most effective at the 70 hertz range or something that maybe goes from 40 up to about 90 or whatever the case but something along that fact and it's going to have to hold that tone for a pretty good length of time because you're going to need to run back and forth to your source unit to the back where your amplifier is located okay so let's just make pretend that this here is the left amplifier what you're going to want to do is you want to get your multimeter turn it on to the voltage most likely you're going to want to put it on the highest setting what you're going to want to do is, it's, let's just say if it's a mono amplifier, you're not going to have a, a stereo left and right. So let's just say that we're going to use these two. Now, take that and put your system on its max output, okay? So however loud you're ever going to play that thing before you completely hurt yourself and just hurl yourself out your window with your bass, okay? Hold this down, get a measurement, okay? Write it down. So let's just say if this here is going to be, um, you know, 100 volts. Do the same thing on your other amplifier. If this one here is, say, 900, you got a difference. You got a big difference. What you need to do is adjust your gains. That's the first thing, and it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be pretty close. You want to get those gains as close to one another as it possibly can. So that way, when woofer one is traveling, you don't have tra woofer number two going in the opposite direction. That causes two problems. It causes one, Phase cancellation, when one is going this way and one is going that way, that's out of phase. That's the opposite of what you want to do. What you need it to be is you need both moving simultaneously in the exact same motion. That's how you get the compounding sound, that's how you get the big sound, and that's how you're going to actually get the most performance from your system. So that's number one. Number two is do a similar test and do it with your low pass filter if you're utilizing it or if you're not using an external processor. What it, wherever your, your processor is and wherever your filter is, your last word, that's where you need to go to. Tune them, 
very slowly. You don't have to have it cranked out and maxed out, but you do need to get it to be about the same. This one is very tricky to do, especially with a standard multimeter such as this. Um, you would need some pretty serious equipment, something that most people are just not going to have. So what I would recommend that you do is put them both exactly the same, and I mean exactly the same, and listen to it. Now what you're going to want to do is just tweak it, turn one very, ever so slightly. And if you notice that your, your sound is getting bigger, deeper, and badder, you're on the right track. Once you keep going and you notice that it's getting worse, that's where you need to stop and go back. Then go to your amplifier, the other amplifier, do the same exact thing. Once they both sound identical, you've done all you can do. And I can assure you, all your problems will go away. So if you have a multi-sub system and they're all in the shared common airspace, using multiple amplifiers, try this trick. It's going to work, it's going to sound better, and you're going to thank me for it. Give it a try.